free Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to yet another iteration of what now seems to be a video series going along. I don't know, you let me know, the last one was very well critically acclaimed, that was the Russian 8.3 and the idea of these longest matches is that we take a look at games that are exciting, enticing, have tactic developments, have good teams, but most of all they tend to not just include one vehicle, they tend to include a grouping of vehicles. So today on the line I've got primarily and almost exclusively German ATGMs. Now, I know that I've done a video exclusively on the Rakitnik Panzer II just about a couple of days ago. Um, well, the tank isn't particularly good, and as I mentioned, I was working towards the Rakitnik Panzer II HOT, which I've got here, and let me just tell you, this thing is fantastic. But it's not just a tank that ended up being great, it was the teams. I was blessed with teamwork, I was blessed with cooperation, and for once I'm not going to be basing the video so much upon my playstyle, but rather please keep an eye out for what the players are doing. Just keep an eye out for what they're doing. Consider this a multiple gameplay option. To start off, I thought I would show you exclusively a match in the Rakitnik Panzer 2 HOT. This was such a good match that I didn't need to respawn in anything, which is, a, they're a rarity, they're a very rare match occurrence. And because this match was extremely quick and very, very clubby, um, well, if I just showed this match, I might as well have called the video War Thunder's shortest matches. Now, the map we're playing on here is the one that I've also discussed in the Rakitnik Panzer 2 video. It is Sinai. Or at least that's what I thought it was. Of course, I was too hypocritical and hyperactive to, in fact, look it up. It's not pronounced Sinai, it's pronounced Sinai. Right, I digress. We got the correct pronunciation going in, and let's now focus on the match. My deep apologies. Now, the way I'm playing this tank, and it took me a couple of matches to realize, is it suffers from the same issue as the Rakitnik Panzer II. No gun elevation or depression, but because it's moused aim, it does not require at least like 100 to 150 meters before the actual shell can start to be guided. It can be used in close quarter engagement, although because of the fact that it can't be uh, rotated horizontally for more than, well, whatever degree that is on the screen right now, um, you have to really play it like a tank destroyer. Very frontally, wherever you want to fire, that's where you have to point the tank at. So my tactic is support the team from behind. I'm not pushing forward, I'm supporting the Leopards, which the majority of matches are going to consist of due to the current spam of them. Of course, everybody's trying to research the new one uh, by, of course, playing the old one. Now, the map has one objective. Now, the objective is to capture Alpha. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to capture Alpha, but not me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay on top of Alpha and see if I can't lay some support on my teammates. The Rakitnik Panzer is great, it's fast, it's maneuverable, it doesn't have any armor, you don't really need it at these top tiers, it's quite irrelevant to be honest, unless you're driving a T-10 that we're engaging now. And this here you will see the problem of engaging enemies from a little bit too close, you can see the shell just went straight over, but even though I missed, the Leopard finished them off and I was able to go into the cap circle and I'm now able to capture it. Within the last second I spot a ZAC-57 flanking to the left, so put myself in advance, fire the rocket, and this is the lead, lead advantage that this thing has. The Rakitnik Panzer 2 HOT has become probably my favorite tank in the game at this point, not just at the current patch. It's got a very fast reload of about 8 seconds. It's only got one rocket, but it's mouse aimed, so it's significantly easier being a second generation ATGM. And most importantly, that rocket has a penetration value of 800 millimeters and travels at 240 meters per second. It is by far the most, well, easier said, the most potent shell that ATGMs have. It, it's sort of like the perfect balance between what an ATGM is and what a tank shell does. It's not too slow, it's not too fast, you, you have enough time to aim it, but there's not too much time for the enemy to evade. It is an absolute joy to drive around with. And it's needless to say, I did in fact put a talisman on it, and I'm now grinding the Leopard A1A with it. Which is, of course, a bit of a double way of grinding. 
So, the tactic I use for grinding here, whilst we're pretty much just seal clubbing the remainder of the enemy team, um, the tactic I've started using recently is I've started to put talismans onto vehicles that I find enjoyable to use, especially when they are stock from the get-go. What I do with this is I eliminate pretty much 50% of the grind on that vehicle because I want to spade it whilst grinding for whatever vehicle I'm researching. So for me, whilst new patches do introduce new vehicles that I have to go and unlock and spade, um, just spading a vehicle gives you RP only to the vehicle itself. But by spading a vehicle whilst researching something else, you're not just researching it, but as soon as you're getting the upgrades in a certain rank, so from rank 1 to 4 when you fulfill one of the ranks, you're given a lot of bonus RP. So by researching the Rakit Neck Panzer, I was using the Rakit Neck Panzer 2, and then for the Leopard I'm using this. It's a very effective way of grinding, whilst of course uh, spading the vehicle itself. So I kill two birds with one stone and do it with massive effectiveness. Now, the sole reason this match went so well was because our Leopard drivers decided to play it tactically. Um, I'll be honest here, I'll be very swift, I do not like when Leopards go and flank. Well, when a few Leopards flank is okay, but the worst things usually happen when the entire team of Leopards decides that they're gonna flank. It leaves the middle of the map completely exposed, again, depending on where you're playing, and usually Russian tanks just ruffle stomp straight through the middle, get into your spawn, and then it, the game's pretty much over. Now, whilst ATGMs are fantastic vehicles, they're made mainly for back-of-the-map support, long-range combat, rather than that short-range engagement. You can see here, from that distance, it's not a problem in killing a T-62 with its low profile, but you have to keep an eye out for the fact, again, you don't have that elevation or depression of the gun, so a certain distance from a tank is often required for you to be able to put shells into the enemy target. And this is it. This is us, seven minutes into the game, and it's over. The enemy team has lost. Now, they did actually spawn in a MiG-15, and until he gets shot down, the game keeps going for about a minute and 30 seconds, but overall, the match is over, and we can move on to our second match. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. This is not going to be an entire ruffle stomp match, um, but it will contain, again, good teamwork from the majority of players. But it is one of my least favorite iterations of Berlin. We're talking about the so-called spawn cap scenario, except that on Berlin, the so-called spawn caps are rather much more in the middle of the map. Now, for the enemy, they've got Alpha that we're supposed to capture and take hold of, basically right in the middle of the map. For us, the point we're supposed to defend is right next to the Reichstag. Slight problem. Because what I've seen is a lot of Leopard drivers seem to have the mentality of defending the home cap instead of offending the other one. A little tip. What you tend to should do, or at least the results so far have been the best, is to have Leopards go straight down that main road and start flanking into the enemy spawn. That tends to create the most damage because what you can do is create a bit of a, um, a horseshoe type shape and you just kind of push straight in, a bit of a pincer maneuver that pushes the enemy um, back into their spawn in a sense. So what I've done here is I've decided to take a bit of a different approach. That first map worked so well for me that I thought I'll test this tactic out again. Instead of being offensive, instead of rushing in and playing it as aggressive as I usually do, I decided to play it very, very safe. So I've put myself into a very hold-down position behind a destroyed Tiger 1, and I'm just using that rocket to snipe over. Keep in mind the tank at this point is still pretty much stock, and I do not have the upgrades on the um, fire extinguisher, or the parts, I believe. I might have the parts, but I definitely don't have the fire extinguisher, which will cost me dearly later on. Now, my tactic is this. I am a support vehicle. I'm great at long-range sniping. If there's a vehicle exposed, I can take him out ASAP. So, what I know is this. I know that our Leopards, some of them are going to be protecting Bravo, and I know that the enemy is going to be rushing Bravo. And, of course, immediately a ZSU drives straight in there. And then I spot an IT-1 in a really awkward position behind a house, but guess what? We're driving an ATGM. We can take him out, even though he's behind cover. That's the art of ATGMing. I know this annoys a lot of people. I know that it's a controversial subject that you can actually shoot people when they're behind cover, but that's basically what the lead advantage of ATGM tanks is, because you can't do that with a normal tank. You would have to 
uh, either try to outflank them or maybe force them to retreat or move out the location with the use of an artillery strike. So for me, ATGMs are sort of like long-range artillery support groups. Now, because I was spotted, I decided to simply do the smartest move and relocate. I don't want to take the chances, I want to play this match out right, and this is where I want to touch on to my second tactical topic. Because I'm grinding and because I'm trying to spate these vehicles, and because ground forces tend to be what people say is bias rewarding, where there's not enough rewards being given, um, I think the main mistake is players don't win matches. You've got to win matches if you want to get a bunch of RP. So my focus has become winning is a priority. If I end in the middle of the map, here's the thing, if you usually win the match, you're going to be at least in the in the top half of the team. And if you're in the top half of the team, you've probably scored maybe a frag, two, maybe three kills, and that enough uh, together should give you plenty of RP to research. But if you're losing a match and you've got 10, 12 kills, you're respawning in 15 vehicles, trust me, it's not going to be giving you the RP that you're looking for. Now that chieftain that I engaged in the very beginning of the match has managed to find its way into the riverbed. He's now protecting Alpha against two of our leopards. But again, remember, I'm an ATGM. This is basically my point of expertise. Spot the top of him and take him out for my team. Now I've opened up an opportunity for two leopards to drive straight into Alpha and start the ticket bleed. And with basically the middle of the map taken care of, I again move position and start slowly closing into the enemy spawn. Because we're one of those matches where there's not so many players, I can really afford to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, tactic-wise, the reason I love ATGMs, and I've got to be very honest, I didn't like ATGMs. When they were first introduced, I had to fight against IT1s at Battlering 8.0, uh, there was the Sheridan I didn't like, and then to make matters worse, my first tank that I actually drove out that was an ATGM was the Sheridan, and stock the Sheridan gets this fantastic, um, fantastic heat shell that basically does absolutely no damage. Well, it, it does, but taking the lead, it's, it's really hard to use it, long story short. So here I spot a Chieftain, and just before he could actually go back and finish me off, I got a little bit stuck there on the mud, uh, he gets taken out by a Leopard, and if you've seen a bit of a correlation here is, I'm not going for the kills. You see, that's the thing, I'm not focusing on getting kills to, you know, be the top of the team. What I'm doing is, I'm just trying to take out as many players as possible. I'm not going to complain about an assist. Now, we could have that argument that yes, an assist where you deal the majority of the damage should be a more worthy assist than one where you just, you know, shoot a couple of machine guns into the enemy tank before they blow up. Uh, yes, I completely agree, but for the sake of the argument here, if you want to maximize the amount of RP you get, do try to focus on winning matches and winning them as fast as possible rather than just ending up on top of your team with a majority of kills. And this is where things go wrong, but yet quite ironically funny. The IT-1 fires at me, I fire back, I completely miss him, and kill an ASU-85 I didn't even know was there. Then I realize that I'm on fire, I can't take the fire out, but I can take another pot shot back at the IT-1. He fires at me, and just before he could kill me, I managed to critically damage him in return. Now, I wasn't awarded the kill, I believe, but that was enough to really um, immobilize him and make him an easy target for my teammates. And yes, those of you who've paid attention to that little clip there will have noticed that I did in fact shoot with a damaged cannon barrel. That is a bit of a common problem with ATGMs. So, my next target is to take out the Rakitnik Panzer II, which isn't so good, and try to do my best against... Uh, you know, I think that team kill was a was a payment for all the good teams that were given to me. I mean, you, you can't all go right, correct? Now, I did in fact team kill him back, but not for the sake of getting vengeance, but purely because I didn't want him to team kill anywhere else, or team kill me in return, because I have, I have a lot of uh, consideration of winning this match, and the last thing I need is a cum bucket on my team. And you know what the funniest thing is? I, I love a bit of good old-fashioned stat shaming. I check this guy out on Thunderskill. By the way, Thunderskill is a really great website for checking out player stats if you're interested into those type of things. Uh, this guy has played, uh, I believe, over 25,000 matches. He has an average kill-to-death ratio of 1, an average kill-to-battles ratio of 1, and is ranked by Thunderskill itself as uh, an average player. So, yeah, next time you call me average, uh, I guess you know who you're comparing me to. Right, jokes aside, uh, the match uh, the match is not over yet. I mean, we're definitely going on to the winning side of things here, but it's not completely solidified. Now, with that, uh, 
special sunflower out of the game. I don't have to worry about anyone else team killing me, so what I do is I take my Kugel Blitz, which by the way is a great vehicle to drive. Again, could have a bit of a discussion about SBAs here, but we'll, we'll leave that for another time. I take it straight into Alpha. I mean, what I could do is I could try to chase after uh, some of the tanks, uh, you can actually kill IT-1s, T-54s, T-62s from the side very easily, you can immobilize them from the front. Uh, but because I know that the way to win this match as fast as possible is to simply sit in the cap circle, capture it, um, that's what I decide to do. If there is a plane that decides to bomb us, I know where to find them, and uh, yeah, we're just going to do this in the casual sense of the word. Now, capturing this point might be one of those things that players might want to do early on. Sadly, if you try to attack the, the capture point very early in the game, there's a very high chance you're going to get Zerg rushed by the enemy team, because when they see it happening, they know there's somebody in there. That's the only problem. When you're capturing a point, you're very, well, publicly saying, hey guys, this is where I am, so players will be coming after you. So a bit of a tip, keep your situational awareness up, and as much as that might go for a lot of people, it also goes for players like me, because I didn't have any situational awareness in this situation. There's a Coelian running down behind me, another one of the German SPAs. For some reason, I managed to completely fail a M42 Duster driving straight behind me into the cap circle. Were it not for that Coelian, well, I probably wouldn't have managed to get here. Then again, if that other Kugelblitz was still alive, I probably also wouldn't have managed to get here. So, yeah, a bit of a shout-out to, uh, to the Coelian driver here, he did actually save my skin, and luckily enough, the M42 only managed to kill two of my crewmates, and uh, only damage, lightly, the turret ring. So, with a capture point going halfway here, we're just trying not to get killed by artillery, and really waiting for the match to end. Uh, again, pay close attention to the map, right now I can see that there's really not many places where the enemy could be coming from, and the reason I say the map is important is because Usually, if there's a player at a particular road between the spawn and you, chances are the player will not be coming through that corridor. But because our left flank is completely open, that is something where I would want to keep a little bit of attention on. And to wrap this video up, I would really like to just call out and really give a huge shout out to both of those teams. Because the Leopards did what they had to do. They didn't rush, they didn't play too defensively, they were uh, aggressive to a certain extent, and it was a joy driving out and, and, and playing with these teams. I, I have a huge problem with teams. You know, probably you've seen a bunch of my videos and you know that I love complaining about teams. It's mainly because of miscommunication, because players don't look at where their teammates are located, they're too preoccupied with only looking uh, and covering their own ass, which, you know, I understand to a certain extent, but... Trust me, if you could focus more on winning matches rather than ending on top of your team, you'll be having much better results. But of course, ending on top of your team after helping the team win is also a pleasant benefit. Anyway guys, that's it for the video today. Hope you enjoyed another lengthier one for you lot. Um, if you enjoyed these guys, please do let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to make some more. Until next time, take care and uh, safe driving. And don't be a cum bucket. It's really, really all over the place and hard to fly. And here, like it or not, I'm going for the easy targets. Because an F-84, I'm not going to catch it. I'm not going to outgun it. I'm not going to outturn it. There's really nothing I can do against an F-84 if he knows half of what he's doing. So instead I go for the Ak-15, we're already damaged. I finished off the f f previously. And that's pretty much all the action for this game. Because now comes the fun part. Chasing F-84s. And chasing F-34s, by the way, isn't that difficult of a thing. That is, if you have players on your team that are capable of catching them. Unfortunately, we don't. Now, the Horton might be able to keep up with it for a little bit, but as soon as the F-34 goes into a turn, the Horton's going to rip its wings off, which already half of